Did you know that over 50% of qualified teaching candidates fail at their interview because they're not fully prepared? And we know that in today's job market, it's super competitive and the interview can make or break your opportunity to land your dream job. But in today's episode, we're going to explore strategies that will help you not only stand out amongst the crowd, but also crush the interview process. So grab your pen, your piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're going to start right now. Hey, everybody. Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey and your leadership journey. If this is in fact your first time with us, don't forget, hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes or content. Hey everybody, welcome in. Today, we're talking about the interview. And we're talking about the teacher's interview. So for those of you who are pursuing your dream job as a classroom teacher, as an educator, as somebody who is going to change the lives of kids, you're gonna to wanna to tune in. You're gonna to wanna to dig into these strategies and you're gonna to wanna to implement these strategies as you go into your next opportunity to get a teaching position. And I know, I've gone through many, many interviews. I've gone through, I remember going through my own teacher interview. It was stressful. It was nerve wracking, but it was worth it. And what I can tell you is if you prepare, if you take and spend some time making sure that you get ready and you implement the strategies that are in this video, you will be ahead of the game. You'll be ready to stand before the principal. You'll be ready to stand before the interview panel and be able to share your story, convey who you are, connect with them. And these are clear strategies that will help and support you as you pursue this goal. So if you stay with us until the end of the episode, I'm going to give you a bonus strategy that is going to be an absolute killer script that you could use to convey all about who you are as an education professional. So stay tuned until the end to get that bonus tip as well. So we're going to talk about three strategies that are going to help you be able to thrive in the high stress, high anxiety moment of an interview. Let's jump in to strategy number one. The first thing you want to do, and if you don't do this, it literally, for me, if you walked in to interview with me or my team, it would be absolutely disqualifying if I couldn't see evidence that you had done this first thing. What is that first thing? Researching and knowing a lot about the school and district that you're applying to. Why is this important? Well, it's important that you're doing your research. You're being diligent. You're exploring what's that school about? What's that district about? What's that community where that school is situated? What are they about? And you find that information by going on the district's website, going on the, on the school site's website, searching social media, looking at X, looking at, uh, looking at Instagram, looking at TikTok, all of these different schools and locations and places, they have just given you all types of information about who they are on their publicly available spaces. Dig into that. Find out what their key initiatives are. Find out what they care about. Find out, most importantly, what are they proud of? What are the things that they're showcasing? What are the things that they're highlighting? Find out what those things are and then figure out, do those things resonate with you? Do you have a, an experience? Do you have an example of how you and your knowledge, your education, your background may align with the same things that they care about? This is how you build rapport in the interview process. So taking the time to search those publicly available spaces, reading, researching, reflecting, and then thinking about how do I incorporate my own knowledge and experience and background and how do I fit and how do I look at ways to connect with the principal and with the panel? This is the very first thing you absolutely should do because when you can build that rapport and you can build that connection, you want the principal 
You want the panel to see you as a part of their team. And the first way you build that connection is for them to say, oh, they know something about us. They took the time and they put in the effort and the energy to learn more about us. We are selfish that way. We, we love what we do and we wanna showcase it and we want other people to know about what we do. And most importantly, when somebody wants to join our team, we wanna know they know who we are. It's just the reality. And so do yourself a favor, research, 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 the institution, the school site, the district, and the community that you're applying to and you're interviewing for. That is strategy number one. Let's talk about strategy number two. Foundational to every good classroom is a teacher, an educator, a professional who knows how to create an engaging, safe, inclusive, nurturing classroom. So having solid classroom management is strategy number two, conveying that, demonstrating how you'll create that environment, how you'll have routines, protocols, practices, expectations that you will set for your students, you will set for yourself. Those routines build the structure, but also build the environment where students can thrive when they have routines that they can rely on, when they have expectations that are high, that they can reach to, that they can excel towards. This is the type of environment that you have to create as a classroom teacher. And I can guarantee you every principal I have known, worked with, been around, they will have an absolute guaranteed question around classroom management. And and why? Why would a principal care about your classroom management? Well, principal char principals are charged with a safe and orderly campus environment, and your classroom would be a part of that classroom environment, that campus environment. But more importantly, selfishly, and so we're, you know, we're just gonna have some straight talk. Selfishly, principals wanna know that you can handle your business. If you have a student who is having some behavioral challenges, that you can spend the time with that student, that you can talk to them, that you can connect with them, and that you won't automatically pick up the phone and call the office, automatically send the student away to the office. But in fact, you have the skills and you have the capacity and you have the ability to handle that situation, that circumstance in your classroom. The consummate professional educator handles their business within their classroom. And the way we do that is being able to have a robust classroom management process. And in the context of the interview, being able to articulate what that looks like. What will your rules be? What will your procedures be? Talk to about that. Talk to us when you're interviewing about that. We wanna hear what that looks, feels, and sounds like. We wanna hear how you're going to be able to differentiate for the different needs of students in your classroom. We wanna know how you're gonna be inclusive, how you're gonna onboard and bring students into the fold of what your lessons will feel like and what your learning experiences will look and sound like. That's all a part of the classroom management process. And being able to articulate that and share that with and have principals hear, okay, I'm hearing what that looks like. I can visualize that. That's something that I, gels with my vision as a principal. That's what gels with my, my thoughts around what I'm wanting to create on my campus and in my campus environments. Because that's what you're trying to do. Whoever you're interviewing with, you want them to be able to, re, to reflexively think about what that looks, feels, and sounds like, and does it align with what they're looking for. So those are your opportunities to convey those messages clearly, effectively, and be vivid, be detailed, right? And be excited as you're talking about the world you see for your students and what, what environment and what type of classroom you're gonna create for them. This is where we get excited. This is what we wanna see from teacher candidates. And so as you're conveying that 
just know that we are looking for those things that we can see alignment, we can see connections, and those are the types of folks that we're gonna wanna hire. So being able to convey that classroom management philosophy and put that into words and articulate it in an effective way, that's strategy number two. Okay, so before we move to strategy number three, share with us in the comments below, what are some classroom management strategies that you would incorporate into your classroom? And what types of strategies will you talk about in your next interview? Share that with us in the comments below so we can share that with our, with our community, all of the folks who are learning and growing with us together as a part of this journey. We all benefit from when people are sharing in the comments the things that they're doing, the ideas that they have. We richly kind of share and bless each other by sharing that information and that content. So share with us in the comments below what are some classroom management strategies that you will share in your next interview and that you will use in your classroom when given the opportunity. All right, and let's move to strategy number three. So strategy number three, we want to take and give you a, a framework of how you can now work your way through the rest of the interview questions that you'll likely face. And so you may get questions about parent engagement. You may get questions about student discipline. You may get questions about professional development and collaboration. You may get questions around uh, technology. You may get questions around curriculum. So all of those different topics, I wanna give you a strategy that you can apply for how you will approach giving a very robust, but also a very uh, easily understood and digestible response. So we use what's called the STAR method. And so the STAR method means specifically what's the situation, the task, the action, and the result. Situation, task, action, result. So when you think about answering questions, first think about a specific situation or scenario. That may be laid out in the question. So the question may give you a scenario. Then the next thing you wanna think about is what is the task? How will I actually go about addressing that particular scenario? How will I address a student who is misbehaving? How will I address how to implement technology into my lessons in an effective way? How will I encourage increased engagement and increased student discussion because they are in collaborative groups? So these are our specific scenarios or situations. And then the task is how will I address that? And then the next part is how will, what action will I take? So I will create very intentional groups, groups, and I will give members of the group specific identified roles and specific task. So that way when they're engaged in the lesson, they will have a specific role and responsibility and a specific look for and peace that they will share back with me. And then what is the result? And as a result of having these defined groups and laying them out with very specific roles and tasks, the result was increased engagement, higher performance, higher levels of student interaction, and a much more robust learning environment. So this situation, task, action and result STAR method is a really good protocol that allows you to answer questions in an effective way. And if you want more information about the STAR method, you can check out this other video that we've shared in the past as well, because that will give you more information about the STAR framework as well. But what you want to do is as you think about using the STAR framework, the STAR protocol, it's it really is trying to give you some tools and some strategies that will give you a sense of not, a, I, guess, I guess I would say a sense of comfort, but it's more about trying to alleviate your nerves. So if you have protocols and procedures that you can follow that give you uh, the ability to focus on that and not be worried about the other things that are already the high stress kind of components of the interview, this is going to give you a leg up. So if you're thinking about, I've got a ta I've got a, I've got a framework for how to answer these questions. Now I can focus on just following my game plan and that decreases my level of anxiety. I can control my breathing. I can control 
just how nervous I am. So apply these protocols because they're really, really important. So let's talk about that bonus strategy that I talked about at the beginning of the episode. And the bonus strategy for you is a concrete tool that I want you to use right away. I want you to create this for yourself and have it ready to be able to deploy in your next interview. And that is to share your teaching philosophy statement. Teaching philosophy statement. That is all about who you are, what you believe, what your values are, how you will come into the work on a daily basis, what drives you. So I want to give you an actual example of what that could sound like. And take this example and then riff off of it, change it, revise it, make it more you, put it in your own voice. But let's give you a sample of a teaching philosophy statement that you could use in your next interview. So here's an example. My teaching philosophy centers on creating a student-centered, inclusive classroom that fosters critical thinking, collaboration, and lifelong learning. I believe in the power of equity and diversity to enrich the learning environment. And I strive to create a space where every student feels valued and empowered to contribute. By incorporating inquiry-based learning, I encourage students to ask questions, explore multiple perspectives, and connect their learning to real world context. My goal is to not only teach the curriculum, but also to inspire curiosity, self-confidence, and a love for learning that extends beyond the classroom. I continuously adapt my teaching practices based on student feedback, research, and reflective assessment to ensure that I meet the diverse needs of my scholars. Ultimately, I aim to nurture a classroom culture that promotes academic achievement, personal growth, and respect for others. That's a teaching philosophy statement. Now take that and use that as a basis for who you are and what you want to convey, because that was my philosophy in the classroom. That's what I wanted to create with my students. What's the philosophy you want to create? Build your teaching philosophy statement. Share some ideas and some concepts in the comments below. What are you thinking about? What resonates with you? What message do you want to share? As we grow and as we develop, I want you to get your dream job as an educator. I've been doing this now for going on 25 years and I love the work that we do. I love every opportunity to grow our students, their knowledge, their skills, their capacity. When those light bulbs go off for them and you see that they've got it, there's no better feeling in the world. And if you're ready to come into the classroom, if you're ready to come into this distinguished profession, we want to help you get there. So take these strategies and incorporate them because you will be there. You will do that. I have confidence in you. Your time is coming. Use these strategies and they will help you. All right. And so as we move forward, uh, if you have gotten value out of the video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you get more updates. Make sure you share this with others. Share with a friend. Share with a number of friends. We want to get this out to as many people as possible. We're going to grow the education professional with top-notch quality people. Our kids deserve nothing but the best. And so I know you guys are out there. So keep pushing, keep striving. If you want information about our coaching resources, our weekly newsletter, you can check the description below. Keep working hard. We believe in you. And don't forget to check out this next video because that video is also uh, the video I talked about earlier in the episode about the STAR method and more information about using these frameworks to effectively answer questions and reduce your level of stress and anxiety while you're in that pressure cooker moment of the interview. So check out this next video as well. Take care of each other and be well. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.